In this video, I'm going to show you how you can show your top values in your Power BI reports and group the rest of your values into an others bucket. I'm going to show you how to set it up so that the ordering sets the others on the right hand side of your tables or charts. And we're going to talk about some of the limitations that comes with this implementation. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So in a recent video that I uploaded, I covered how you can set up a dynamic top N using parameters in Power BI. And this solution essentially allows you to use a slider option in order to show just the top values that you want to see in your table. Now, the thing with that solution is that it doesn't show everything else. So if you're showing country by sales, for example, you're only showing the top three countries and you're not showing the rest of your countries. And in a lot of best practices, when it comes to visualizing data, it's recommended that you show your top values individually and you would bucket everything else in the others bucket. This ensures that if your users add up all those sales in your charts, it will be the same as if seeing it individually as the total sales. If my explanation is a little bit too confusing, I'm going to show it to you in a demo here so you understand exactly what I mean. So first, let's get you acquainted with this demo file that I prepared for you today. It's the data model that we always use, Northwind Traders, which is a data set for a fictional company that sells grocery goods internationally. We have a few basic tables that are imported from this uh, data model. We have obviously the order details and the order table, which gives you order information when they ordered it, how much they ordered and how many. We have the customers table, which lists out all the customers, the companies they're affiliated to and which country they belong to. We have the products table, which lists out the products that we sell and the categories table, which groups our products in some logical manner. Beyond these tables, we created two helper tables to help us organize the model. We have the calendar table, which is what we use for all our time intelligence calculations. And then we have a measure table, which simply houses all the measures and calculations that we're going to use in this demo. At the moment, we just have one measure here that we've pre-created sales, which simply calculates the sales from all the orders by multiplying the unit price by quantity. We've also predetermined the relationships between all these tables, so you don't really have to worry about it. And in fact, it won't be the focus of this demo. So let's start by adding the customer's company name here. And let's bring in the sales. And let's sort this by descending order. So we have the companies that are best selling are our best customers by sales. So if we change this into, let's say a bar chart like this, and you can see here that we are already sort of analyzing this data, but at the same time, we have too many companies in this list and we can't avoid that. We have a lot of customers, but maybe you will have instances where you just simply want to show your top values and group the rest into an others bucket. The first thing that you need to do is to create a ranking of your customers by sales in order to determine who is in this top values that you want to set up. So to make this a little bit easier for us, I'm going to go to our and make this a little bit smaller as well. Go to our table view here, go to our customers table and let's create a new column here. We're gonna name this one top sales, top customer sales. And here we're going to simply use the rank X similar to our previous solution. So for this rank X, we're gonna use all company name for the expression we're going to use the sales which we've already used ordering we're going to order it descending because we want the highest 
uh, company first. And in this rank X, instead of having or referencing a specific column, we just reference the customer table. So if we sort this by descending or ascending, it will give us our top buyers essentially, which should be the same as our chart over here, which you will see it's the quick stop, save a lot, markets and earth handle which is the same in this list now that we've ranked our customers by sales we now need to group anyone not within our top five into an others category so in order to do that we're going to put this ranking that we've used or created into a variable and just name it rank we're gonna hit the return here and then we're gonna start with an if statement. So the if statement should say, if the rank is less than or equals to our top value, top let's say top five for now, then the result of the column should be the company name. Otherwise, it should be other. So this is what groups the others or everything else into this others bucket hit enter you will see that some pe some of our customers here will just have others in their list because they're not in the top five customer sales that we have set up and in fact you will see that quite easily if we put this and just change this back into a table and then if I show the top customer sales, you will see that it's only giving us the top customer sales names if they are within the top five and everything else into others. And you know what that means? That means that we don't have to use the company name. We can simply use this new column that we've created as our company name. And we can go and now make this into a chart which gives us our top selling or our top buyers and everything else grouped into others so let's just add a few elements here like values or data labels that will make this a lot easier for your users to read so just none and yeah so now that you're showing your top five customers and grouped everything else into others, if you wanted to change the top uh, sales or you wanted to show more or less, you can simply change it here. So instead of showing top five, maybe we can show top three. And if you hit enter, that will automatically change what dimensions are being shown in your chart. So pretty simple, right? The one thing that is normally implemented when you're showing your data like this is you would often show your top selling companies on the left and you would always show your others onto the right, which is basically out of the way. We don't want to put our focus on the others because that's just supplementing what insights we're showing in that visual. And here in this chart that we've set up here, it's always sorting or, or it's always logically sorting by size so by, by total sales and with others being or going to be always the top selling or will have this the maximum value. We kind of don't want that. We want to create a custom ordering to force the others to be on the right hand side or at the in this case at the bottom of our chart here. So to do that, we need to create a new column to custom to create this custom order. So the first thing that we need to do is copy the variable here because we're just going to simply reuse that into a new column here. I'm going to create a new column top sales order, paste it, leave the variable and then we'll go and return this. And then here we'll add an if statement once more. So we will follow the same logic that we did in the top customer sales, except this time we want to get the rank and we don't want to get the customer name. So if the rank is less than or equals to three, because what, that's what we have at the moment, give me the rank of it. Otherwise, 999. So essentially what's happening is if you are within this ranking, so if you are in the top values, give me your rank, which is either one, two or three. If you're not, which means you are others, you are 999, which puts others 
at the end of your order. I will show you how that looks like on a table itself, just so that it makes sense for you. So if I sort this by ascending, you will see that Quick Stop, Save A Lot and Earth Handle, these are the results of the ranking that we've done here, the rank X. And you'll notice that all the other values are showing 999, which will always force the others category to the very end of our chart. So from here, we simply need to go to top customer sales, sort by column and top sales order. And that should pretty much work for you. So if we go back to our report here, let's sort this now by company name. Well, let's delete that and re-add it. And there you go. So you will see that now in this chart, even though the others it has the highest number of sales as a category, it's always pushing or being pushed at the bottom of this chart. And you have your top selling quick stop, save a lot and earth handle focused in your chart. You can even go one step further by changing the color of the others, just so that your users are not too focused on this others grouping. And to do that, we simply go to colors, show all, and the others will just change it to a gray color. So that will always show us gray. If you're thinking of using this solution, you need to be aware of a couple of limitations that it has. The first thing is that you can't create a dynamic slicer to control what the top end should be. So if you remember on my previous video, we have used and changed this number and hooked it up into a numerical parameter, which allows your users to use a slider to change what rank is being shown in the table. However, in that video, we're using a measure which allows you to change the values dynamically. In this case, because we're using calculated columns and we have to use calculated columns because we're using it as a dimension, which is essentially how we slice our data by. Calculated columns don't quite work like measures, so they're not really calculated dynamically, but created in DAX, when it's created, it's, it's not dependent on values being affected by any interaction in the report. If you're still confused about the difference between measures and calculated columns, I covered it more extensively in another video, so check it out if you haven't yet. The second limitation that you will find is linked to this non-dynamic ability for this top-end solution, which is that you can't use other dimensions to cross-filter with your top-end. So what do I mean by that? So let's say, for example, let's add category name here as a slicer because we want to see our top uh, customer sales by a specific product. So let's say beverages. Now, you'll see that when I click beverages, the numbers change, which in the grand scheme of things, they are correct because that is the total sales by uh, customer for Quick Stop, for example, is 38,000. However, if you now add and just look at the top sales for companies without our solution and just the sales, you will see that this doesn't correspond with what we have here in this list. So obviously we have Quick Stop as the highest selling, but Hanare Carnes is not here. Also, Rattlesnake Canyon is, it should be on our top three. So because the calculated columns are not so dynamic, the ranking of your chart is set when we created the calculated column. This means that it won't dynamically change like many other measures that you might expect. So if you're using this method for your own solutions, just make sure that you avoid cross filterings if you can. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how to group and show your top end values and group the rest of your values into an others bucket. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.